No rest for the wicked. Left a very strong early impression on me. But as I got introduced to more gameplay mechanics and some missing basic features that I would expect in a 40 euro early access title, I found that these things can hinder enjoyment quite a bit. But let's start with the positives, because there's plenty of that as well. I'll keep this video entirely free of spoilers, except some very early dialogue or cutscenes to show you the voice acting. Other than that, I will visually restrict the content I present here to the first few hours of the game. That tutorial in this game is very good and engaging. It doesn't feel like just a few checkboxes you need to complete, but instead a great natural introduction of how the game works, coupled with some interesting lore and further introduction of various characters. If you have a PC that exceeds the recommended system requirements, graphically speaking, you are absolutely in for a treat. There's no other way to put it. The talent of the game designers shows at literally every corner. The world is rich with details and interactive objects. The lighting effects are beautiful and atmospheric, and you just absolutely want to explore this world. Which brings us to the next aspect that stood out very positively, and that is meaningful and rewarding exploration. I got a taste of this as soon as I woke up on the island. I was just trying to find out if you can swim in this game. And well, not only can you indeed swim, but I was also instantly rewarded for my early curiosity by an item that I had to balance towards to. And there was zero indication or a hint that if I, for some reason, decided to swim in this opposite direction of where I actually had to go, I would get rewarded. This has repeated itself so many times just in my first few hours of playing this game. And I absolutely love it. You are rewarded for exploring every nook and cranny, just like in Elden Ring, for example. The sound design is really nice, and it's very atmospheric as well. Both the music and sound effects couldn't be better in my opinion. Just dash our families. Always one meal away from starving. Voice acting is really good in this game, even for random NPCs. We are now getting into what I perceived as negative. And before I do that, I need to commend the developers for reacting very professionally and openly to all the negative feedback they receive at the moment. They are appreciating and welcoming even harsh feedback as long as it's constructive. And I think that deserves some respect. Now the game's difficulty itself isn't something I perceive as something negative, but instead the things that seem to unnecessarily shape and enhance the difficulty, like the clearly overtuned fall damage. If you thought Dark Souls 3, fall damage was bad. You'll be in for a ride here. Combat that feels very weighty, which also has its positive sides. It feels very personal and punchy, which I like, but it also feels clunky at times. Probably also due to the fixed camera that sometimes clashes with the Souls-like elements. There are tons of enemy groups that attack in staggered patterns, and they don't really flinch from your attacks, unless it's part of a weapon ability. This makes dodging much less useful than in other Souls-likes. Avoiding an attack is isn't as rewarding. As a result, there's some very tedious crowd management. The fixed camera sometimes makes it unnecessarily hard to approach things the way you want. Maybe you came up with a strategy on how to tackle some enemies, but the fixed camera makes it more frustrating than it needs to be. Readability of your environment is very important in Souls games, and I think I'm not the only one who has to get used to this fixed camera style. Some mobs and resources do respawn, but from what I have gathered, it's only every hour. This can be a problem, because you don't have healing items that replenish when you rest, like healing flasks in Elden Ring or Dark Souls, for example. After around 3 hours into the game, you do unlock an option to at least purchase food and healing items with currency. Now about that fall damage I mentioned. Sometimes you're losing around 50% of your health just by dropping a few feet onto the ground. And in a game that emphasizes heavily on exploration, this is overtuned, in my opinion, and actually discourages exploration. Another thing worth mentioning is that your gear breaks, and it breaks fast. From what I have seen and experienced, all it takes is dying three or four times to a boss for your equipment to be destroyed, or in other words, having to be repaired again. The whole point of Souls games is to learn the enemy patterns, and that takes trial and error, which involves dying, and making it even more punishing than it already is, with having to deal with constant repairs. I'm not sure if this is the right call. From Soft is known to have a knack for always striking the right balance in their games, and this is currently missing here. At least that's how it felt to me. Something a lot of people are furious about is not being able to rebind keys, should you choose to play this on a mouse and keyboard. This game is definitely made for a controller, and the game itself actually reminds you of that when you launch the game without a controller connected. 
Performance-wise, for me the game runs almost flawlessly, aside from some micro stutters here and there, but a lot of people on lower end, two mid-tier PCs, report bad frame rates. This is to be expected for a game that's very early, into early access, but it's still worth mentioning that if you are not running a rather serious rig, you should perhaps look up some benchmarks before buying. There are also a couple small things, like inventory or resource management, being rather tedious, but again those things are just to be expected, so I won't judge the game too harshly because of that. This game has an unbelievable amount of potential, but I feel that the extremely unforgiving and in my opinion overtuned difficulty in the first few hours, paired with some mechanics that make the game even more difficult, can be discouraging even to players who are familiar with Souls games. I have no doubt, however, that the developers will try to implement our feedback as soon as possible. They are very active on Discord, Reddit and even the Steam forums, so I'd say wait a couple weeks for a better experience. Let us know what you think. And a quick reminder that a like is appreciated if this was helpful.